Hello and welcome to the next uh, episode of Soviet School of Chess. Uh, today we are continuing uh, with uh, tactics and strategy, but uh, we will talk about uh, restrictions of mobility and uh, mostly obstruction. So uh, how can you use your pieces in order to restrict the mo mobility of your opponent's pieces using the motive of obstruction? We will demonstrate this in uh, several examples. So the first example is the position you see in front of you. Um, if you want, you can pause the video briefly and try to find uh, the best move, winning move for white here in this position. So here, uh, first of all, you need to notice that uh, the king is obstructed and the king is obstructed with his own pieces. So you can see that this queen is obstructing uh, movement of the g6 pawn and uh, because of this uh, constellation of pieces, this king uh, does, doesn't have escape squares from this side. And now this can give you an idea for the tactical strike and the winning move is uh, queen sacrifice, queen takes d7 and after rook takes queen it follows rook e8 with a check. And now the only legal move is king to h7 and now another brilliant move is rook to c8. And you can see that the black can do nothing to stop uh, the checkmate on h8. And why is this so? Because First of all, if the king moves, king will be obstructed by his own queen. So if, if king moves, king cannot escape, it will be checkmate. And also if you go back, you can see that uh, g6 pawn is obstructed by the queen. So there is no possibility, you know, to move a g6 uh, pawn and then uh, create escape square for the king. So king ha doesn't have any escape squares. Mate on h8 follows and uh, this is why black resigned in this position. Okay, let's go to the next example. In this example, it's white to move and it's actually mate in two. So you can stop the video if you want and uh, try to find a mate in two here. We saw this pattern before. This is a famous smothered mate. So the winning move is a queen to g8 check. The only legal move for white now is take with the rook because, uh, you know, queen is uh, protected. So he cannot take with the king. And now just uh, knight to f7 is a smothered checkmate. And also the smothered checkmate, uh, the main motive is obstruction. So the king here is obstructed by his own pieces and this is why the king is checkmated. And the same pattern can be used in a slightly different position. So imagine that uh, this bishop is not here and that uh, this rook is not on f8 but rather on a8. So we come to this position. So from here we have uh, the same pattern but now it's uh, mate in 4. The sequence begins with uh, knight to f7 check. King has to move to g8 and now uh, knight to h6 double check. Now king has to move. If he king moves here it's uh, mate immediately so king has to go back to g8 but now you can see that this square is covered uh, protected by the knight so he can give check with the queen and now he cannot take with the king but he must take with uh, uh, the rook and uh, knight to f7 delivers checkmate. So the same pattern you have restriction of the king and this is why the king is checkmated. Okay, let's go to the next example. So if you look at this position, you will also notice that uh, the king is restricted. So he has many pieces around it. And also the king is in the center. And the black's pieces are very active. So how to realize this advantage? And uh, well, black is cramped, uh, not just king, but uh, the other pieces are cramped as well. So how to realize this advantage? Uh, by opening the center. You need to open the center and, uh, you know, give uh, more mobility to your pieces and then finally attack the king. And this is what white did in this position. He sacrificed the exchange, so rook takes knight, and after d takes uh, e5, now uh, queen takes e5, and uh, the threat is uh, to go here with the check, so uh, queen d4 check, and uh, it's mate. After the bishop blocks, this is just checkmate because the knight is covering the square. So this is the threat, and now a black uh, has one very difficult defense, but uh, in this game black just played bishop takes g4, you know, uh, seeing this threat and hoping that he will uh, have escape square for the king. Uh, before I continue, I'll just tell you what is the correct defense here. It's, uh, like I said, it's very difficult to find, at least for me. So the correct defense is uh, bishop e6. And now if uh, queen d4 check, then knight can block the check with knight to d5. And now you can see that this knight is attacked twice. So bishop takes knight is logical uh, continuation, but now black has in between move queen to g3 with the check, and now white can uh, simultaneously block the check and uh, check the opponent's king. So this is, this is also a very interesting pattern. So uh, if white plays this uh, bishop to g2, you know, blocking the check is simultaneously checking the king, black can just uh, bring back his queen. 
And now if you look at the material balance and uh, the position, it looks like that uh, black is even a little bit better, uh, materially speaking, so the game goes on. But this was not played in the game. In the game, like I said, uh, this bishop takes g4 is played, and now queen d4 check, uh, king uh, runs away to the escape square, and now bishop to e6 check is the star move. Because this bishop is not only giving check, but it's also obstructing this bishop of coming to the defense. And now bishop cannot take bishop, because then uh, the queen will fall. So if uh, the only way to get uh, to capture the bishop uh, will be to try to capture it with a pawn, but now queen d7 check, and the uh, mate follows very soon. So black cannot capture this bishop. So after bishop uh, check, black tried to run away with the king, so king b8, but now knight delivers check, king has to come back, and now knight c5, again a star move, because now it's a discover check, and the uh, knight also has some other plans. So after uh, king to b8, knight goes to a6 check, the only legal move is to take the knight, and then queen b4 delivers checkmate. So again, you can see how uh, the obstruction of the king, but also the obstruction of the uh, defenders, the opponent pieces, so this bishop is obstructed, was obstructed in the game, uh, contributed to, to the, this beautiful checkmate sequence. Okay, let's go to the next example. This is the position we are looking from the black perspective. It's black's turn to move. And you can see that uh, black is down on material. He has a uh, bishop for, for the rook, but he also has very two very dangerous uh, pawns. And uh, this pawn can advance, this pawn can advance. So uh, how did uh, black win this game in a very instructive manner? First, he played c2. The threat is now bishop to b2 and uh, promoting the pawn. So white took the pawn. And now, if you look carefully, White is threatening checkmate on c8. So if black doesn't, if black, for example, promotes, let's say black promotes, then this is a checkmate. The only thing black can do is try to block one once more and then it's a mate. So uh, you can see that there is a checkmate threat. So black cannot just promote to the queen, but black here managed to find a brilliant move. And this is bishop to b2. Now this move does two things. First of all, it is obstructing the rook from capturing the pawn. And second of all, it gives Luft uh, to the king, so it's not checkmate. And now white cannot stop the promotion of the pawn. So whatever uh, white plays now, I mean, he can give a check, but black king will just uh, run away. And if white does nothing, black, black will just promote. If uh, black tries to stop uh, the promotion, for example, with uh, king to e1, then after promoting, uh, white will just lose a rook. So in this position, white resigned to the game. And uh, the final example for today. This is very interesting study. Uh, this is not a position from the real game, but it's uh, very fun and very instructive. So you can see that uh, black has a material advantage. Uh, he has two rooks for uh, one bishop uh, from white. But nevertheless, uh, white has a nice sequence of move. He can obstruct all black pieces so that uh, the game will be forced to draw. Before I show you uh, how this can be done, you can pause the video, try to solve this for yourself, it's really fun. So the sequence begins with uh, bishop to a4 check, and now if uh, king goes uh, to c4, then uh, bishop uh, b3, and uh, he can just repeat the position. So black has to do something else, and the only thing he can do is to uh, capture the bishop. But now b3 check, king runs away, another pawn checks, king runs away, they're all forcing moves, all legal moves. d5 check, king runs away, e6 check, king takes the bishop, and f5. And now you can see that although black has two rooks and the bishop, uh, the game is draw because this uh, wall of pawns is unpenetrable and uh, uh, black species are obstructed so much that he cannot do anything with his huge material advantage. Okay, so with this uh, cute example, I will conclude today's lesson. I hope you are enjoying the lessons and uh, see you very soon. Cheers.